hi there. This is Phil Simborg from the Backgammon Learning Center with another video interview, but this is more of a lesson and a lesson for me than a video interview. I've got online with me a Stick, who is one of the top ranked players in the world and a giant, and also I'm one of my fellow teachers from the Backgammon Learning Center. And when I get into complicated situations that I don't understand very well, I usually turn to Stick or John O'Hagan or Perry or one of my other teachers, and we've expanded to include Mochi and Michi and uh, David Presser. And, uh, we have a lot of great teachers uh, in nine languages. So there's my commercial, but let me tell you what we're here to do today. Uh, I played the uh, doubles match in the first round in L.A. with uh, Fred uh, Irwin Hom from uh, and we met a very good, classy couple, Jeb Horton and Carol Cole. They beat us. We outplayed them a little bit, but we both played pretty well. That's not the important thing. The important thing is, as I went through the match, there were a bunch of problems, both that we, a bunch of plays that both we made and Jeb and Carol made, where I really uh, wasn't sure I could give a good uh, explanation of the right play and why. So I thought it would be fun to do two things. Number one, let's test Dick and see how he would do. He hasn't seen these before. And then let's hear his explanation. Whether he gets it right or wrong, I guarantee you Stick can explain them. So you ready, Stick? Sure. Okay, we're going to put you to the test. Uh, I got eight problems on the match. Let me uh, pull them up one at a time. And, and I'll give you a little time, but the audience watching this can test themselves. What you can do is pause the video if you don't want to hear Stick's answer and come up with your own answer first. So uh, I put red on roll in every case. The score I don't think is too important in these, but it happens to be nothing blue winning. Red has a three point play here. Give it a little bit of thought. Think about what you would do. Again, pause it if you want to come up with your own answer before you hear stick. Stick when you're ready, tell me what you would do. And then I'll show you the answer and you can explain why. All right, so we're looking at either making the eight point and then some random of the two aces that are left or making the bar point. And my knee-jerk reaction is just to make the bar point um, simply for for long-term, keeping your prime in order, like having a prime like solid instead of broken is very important because if it's broken, for example, in this position, if we make the eight point, no matter whether he's on the one, two, or three point, he's always going to have an escape route through the seven point. Whereas if we make the seven point, he can no longer escape from the ace point. Um, so it's pretty important just to keep them in order in general. Okay, so you're giving all this explanation before you even know if you got it right or not. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm playing yet, so I'm just kind of talking out loud. Uh-huh. Um, but that's, that's what I'm thinking. Uh-huh. Final answer? Um, let me see. I'm just... I'm still looking in my head, but I think I have to. Yeah, that's fine. Well, um, you're, you're yeah, right. Yeah, the score is nothing. Yeah, the score you're, is like that. You're right, and it's okay. a blunder. It's a blunder to make the eight point. And, and I, again, I'm not going to knock myself or and, and, or, and, and not tell who get it wrong, but the team playing this got it wrong and made the eight point. And I'm sure the thinking was it's better to block sixes. Uh, but in addition to what uh, Dick just said, if you make the seven point, You've got three builders for the eight point, and if you make the eight point, you really only have two builders to complete the prime for the seven point. So that's another reason. That's the only reason that I could come up with. But your your logic and your reasoning adds to that quite a bit. Yeah. Very good. So you're 100 percent so far. You did that quickly. That was great. All right. Let's end the video. <laughs> <laughs> we can go with the video. I told Stick if the video came out lousy and he was a complete fool, and I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't publish it, <laughs> but I've yet to have that C stick do that. He's been, he's too sharp. Okay, let's go to the next one. Very good. You're batting a thousand. Uh, this is a double three. Six away, good, six away. Yeah, score is six away, six away. I have a good saying about when you when you're playing doubles, find a great play and then stop and find a better one. But uh, whoever made this play wrong, uh, I'll, I'll admit it. I I got this one wrong. I played it wrong. What would you do, stick? All right, so we're looking at obviously hitting, and then I think the last three, um, if we hit, the last three can either be down or lifting it up, or we can obviously just make the bar, which is really strong, but doesn't escape our back checkers at all and leaves us to be counter-primed. Uh, right away, again, I, I have my one second play, which is leaning towards hitting. Um, 
just because we get two counter primed if we leave the, the checkers back. So I'm going to hit for sure. And then um, I think we just make the 10. Okay. Instead of picking it up. Let me just show oh, you. Oh, we can't pick it up. Never mind. Sorry. I was looking at playing 10 to 6 illegally. Uh, uh -huh. So, yeah, I definitely make the 10. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, so you make the back, you make the 10 point and Ten hit. Minute. Yeah. Leaving a blot out yeah. on the 15 and the 13. Yeah. And look how beautiful this looks when you make the bar. How can you pass that up? I couldn't pass this up, but you're right again. The, the hit is right. And <laughs> it looks so pretty to make the bar. And it's a blunder to make the bar. And uh, so you're saying that if you do make the bar, let's tell you what it looks like, you're going to get counter prime too much. Yeah, I mean, you you make the bar, and it is a great offensive position, but you've relinquished outfield control, and certainly on his turn, he's going to either make the four point, the bar point, or possibly hit your checker at the back, or make the the twenty one point anchor. I mean, he's got so many roles that do one of those various things. All right, and if we make your play, now we put three guys back behind some sort of a prime. There really aren't all that many hitting numbers because the hitting numbers also enter. Um, and again, he just he can't prime from here you've taken away his builder you've taken away at least half his role you know now he's just scrambling kind of for an anchor to hit something well dean munch i always used to say when in doubt hit because hitting is fun and yeah <laughs> a lot of the time it's so true that hitting takes precedence over uh, over over priming as it does get you more gamins every time you hit too that's another well in this case it's not too big difference in the game yeah, because you again, whenever you hit like that, you might win more, but you also lose more. So uh -huh. You don't right. lose more here, though. Yeah. You're batting a thousand. Let's take a look at number yeah. three. Uh, Made to play four or two. Oh, boy. Well, DMP, I make the four point, but I'm not sold on that yet. <laughs> Um, DMP, but for, for those oh, of this you, is just yeah, the, this is the last position turned around. Um, yeah, DMP, uh, DMP is a double match point. Uh, but this is not double match point where each player needs one point. There's got a lot. Of, there's a lot of game to go here. Four three and six one and six three. Decent mic here. All right, I'm more unsure of this one than the other ones. Um, and when I am unsure like this, I do just resort to the DMP play. I mean, the guy's got 12 checkers in the zone, which is a ton. I'm 13 checkers in the zone, which is a ton of guys. But he can't attack without ripping apart his prime. And also, if he attacks, we're going to have the stronger board. So it's not that bad. So I'm sticking with what I know is the DMP play, I guess. I'll make the four. Well, I've heard you say many times, when in doubt, make the DMP play. And I think I've also heard you say that one of the main things that you've done to improve your game is play a lot of DMP, and it gets you to the right play most of the time, and it did again here. Yep. Uh, so you nailed it again. It's very, very tempting and scary. It looks like it looks scary to leave this uh, naked over here. But as you said, most of the pointing numbers are going to leave some blots and shots in the outfield. So that means that if we put a couple of losers out here, you'd probably make the other play? Um, not necessarily. Um, it's also, once we play the four from 10 to six, it just makes it so much harder for us to play offense the rest of the game. That's why I, I'm not a big fan of it. Um, I mean, it's, I'm still going to make the four point. I just can't, I just can't not do it. I don't know. Let's see. Uh, you're right. Yeah. It's still I a DMP play. Like... <laughs> So part of the argument that you gave about this getting stripped was not – turns out not to be as big a factor as just simply right. having a, a better game. Yeah. yeah. Again, lifting the 10-point blot from red is what I don't like about the four because then we can't – if we anchor up, that our four has to be 10 to 6, and then our offense is, is really cut. I got like you. It's, it's hard to develop. Okay. Well, I wish you were my doubles partner. <laughs> Let's go to number four. Nothing. I'm sorry, Erwin, but I, I think I would have been better off with stick. <laughs> okay. Well, although I didn't make that play. I, that, was the, that was their play, honestly. Okay. Uh, next one, 6-2 for red. The score might matter here. Uh, I was going to say, why would I not run out? But maybe the score matters. Like, I'm automatically running out here. Uh, 
What the hell else am I going to do? I don't know. I just ran out. I don't know. I'm still running out. Uh, you don't see a second play. I see splitting and slotting the bar as a second play. Um, or slotting the five? No, I'm not getting rid of the 11 point. 11 point's too strong. I'm not breaking that. Oh, you mean just playing 13-5 straight out? Yeah. No, no I, I think you have to move the back checkers with the even race and the threat of him making the five or the four point. Uh -huh. run. And one of the things about moving the back checker is a lot of the numbers that hit you were numbers that were pretty good for making points uh, if you stayed back anyway. Yeah, it's a very good diversionary tactic here. Okay. Bingo. And you didn't even consider another play, but another play was made, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, why don't you play more doubles? God. <laughs> <laughs> I played last tournament and won doubles. I played with uh, – I played with Ben, and we won. Oh, well, that's right. You, you won in, in L.A. <laughs> yep. No, in uh, Vegas, Vegas. In Vegas. It was Vegas. The, the, last, the last tournament you went to. Last my tournament, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. yeah. Well, you, you had to concentrate on your uh, on your doubles in Vegas because some donkey knocked you out of the movie. <laughs> yep, very round. quickly. Yeah. I beat him in the first round by taking a – did I take a horrible cube? Or I gave you, you a gave real, horrible cube, yeah. Huh? Yeah. You gave one, yeah. I love the cube that I gave you. I'll have to show it. <laughs> I love that cube. I'll give it to you every time. I know it was a big blunder, but if things work out bad, I win lots of gamuts. That's my best shot at beating you, and I love that cube. Although, I, got, I can't defend it intellectually. Okay. Yeah, you beat me 18 or 19 to nothing, so at least. <laughs> <I did. laughs> and, well, that was the first round. Next round, I beat Mochi by taking a bad cube, so <laughs> it was a good tournament for me. All right, next one. Uh, red to play 3-1. This is a common five. problem about which five point do you make. Offensive. I'm done. I, I, <laughs> I can't even play 20 and five. Uh, just make the five point. You just make the five point. Yep, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't look vulnerable to you? <laughs> no. No. Well, you're right again. <laughs> I mean, By a mile. Yeah. So, like I said, I thought the second best play might be 20 and 5, but yeah. Yeah, it's the second best play, but yeah. by a mile. It's off yeah. by a mile. And it's a super blunder to, to do it. And again, this was done wrong over the board. And, uh, you know, I, there's a lot of reasons why you just automatically make the fine point because – for one thing, there's a dictum that says, if you can make the five point, make it unless you can find a really strong reason not to. And there's not a strong enough reason not to here. Yeah. There are plenty of times where you would make the other, the other side, uh, the other point, but it doesn't look like this. Okay. You're at a thousand. We got three more. And again, I'll, uh, you're going pretty quick. But yeah. The last two were, were, uh, cupcakes. Okay. So I jump out with the six. And then, um, what's that leave? Ones and sixes. And then I keep going. I just run all the way. You run all the way? Yep, to the midpoint. Uh-huh. Why? Uh, I run all the way because I don't want him to hit me and slot the back of the prime. I also run all the way because the twos and threes are the numbers that he needs to split his back checkers. So you're duplicating and you're stopping him from hitting you in the right spot. You're right again. That's why... I wanted to hear your explanation. Yeah. Again, this was done wrong over the board. It was done this way. Uh, one thing. I don't know. Why, yeah, I, I, can't, I, I think your play makes lots of sense. I can see why for both reasons. And duplication is something that you, your eyeball catches so fast. It's really great. Okay. Let's go to number seven. Maybe this was too easy a quiz for you, but it wasn't for me. Red to play four two. Does he clear the six point or peel two? All right. It's six away, six away. The gammon value is slightly heightened. Um, hmm. So everyone knows the DMP play is probably just to lift off the back point. This might this will take a second, sorry. Um, because our threes are going to be bad if we lift the back point. because uh, there's no spare in the you always want to spare in the second from the rearmost point, or it'll create bad numbers. And if we keep the six point, it'll cause. Wait, 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 wait. I mean, let me make sure I understand what you just said. The second from the rear last point in this case is the, the three point? 
once you lift a six point, yes, that's where you would like to have a spare ideally, because since you don't, you're going to have bad threes. Like oh, that's okay. always I, the case. I think that's the first, that's the first from the rear bad point, in my opinion. Okay. Oh, maybe I worded it wrong. Yeah, it's but semantics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I got you. Sorry. I got you. Yeah. Sorry. I was just talking out loud. Um, it's really bad to have spares on your lowest point also. Uh, I'm really leaning towards ripping here. Um, let me just think for a second. If we pick up he runs threes, we just kick him off. We don't pick up, what is it? Uh, a lot of our fives. Hold on a sec. Sorry, I got I got to look at this for a minute. Six, three, five, three, four, three, three, two. All right, that's eight, six, one, five, one, one, kind of ugly. Four, one, three, one, two, one. Those are all kind of ugly. Six, two. Huh. And he's got two, four, six, seven, eight. Eight, and after that, we'll have nine. All right, I'm going to rip two off. Would you ever make a mistake so I could feel better, so that I won't feel so guilty about beating you? <laughs> Sorry. My gosh, you nailed it again. Yeah, you, well, that one took a little longer. Yeah, but that it doesn't. That's all right. The, you, yeah. you know, look at the the difference uh, of, of clearing the six point. Let me plus plus yeah, it. Plus plus it. Yeah. Just uh, to see. There were a lot of little variables going on here. It's kind of hard. It was it was hard, like whether or not his board is going to break because you know his board's going to break more if you keep the six point because he's not going to be able to run right away. Also, the gammon race, how close it is. You know, there's going to be a definite increase because the gammon race is so close. Um, how many shots you leave? Obviously, there's just a lot going on. Uh, obviously, yeah. the gammon value slightly elevated doesn't hurt any. Uh, well, there's eight percent more gammons. That's a lot. Yeah, that's a big number. Yeah, and you're, right, you're yeah. also right. The DM the DMP play is to clear. If it was a, if gammons didn't matter, you would clear from yep. the back. But uh, let's see. What about shots? Uh, you leave a shot with six one, six five, and five one. Not with six five. If you, I'm sorry. If you if you clear, right. You leave a shot with six five. If you if you if you make which play if you peel two, oh yeah sorry okay sorry yeah and you okay. leave a shot with six five six one and five one yep and then your other aces aren't pretty I went through those because your other aces are pretty ugly like yeah. if you look at your four ones and your three ones and two ones those are very ugly also I see uh, five four ones. also leaves a shot with this last. with this uh, this position it's really your threes are horrible right eight numbers I think six three five three four three uh, three two. So that's that's the reason why it was so tempting to make this play, but I didn't realize you win that many more gamuts. Yeah. Well, obviously, let me go back to the original. Obviously, if there was a spare on the three point, that might change things, huh? Mm, it definitely makes it a lot safer, and it also cuts down on your gamuts because you have a less checker off. Um. Well, let's see. I'm not going to put yeah. you on the spot okay. on this one because I just made it up. Let's just see. Yeah. It make it, it might make it closer or it might change it. But it has to make it at least closer. No, well, it changed it. Right, yeah, yeah. I mean, it had to go in that direction for sure. Yeah, so you nailed it. Uh, because Zero shots. Yeah. yeah, it makes a big difference in shots, even though there's still 8% more gamuts. You yep. still, now the wind's changed by enough because of the shots. All right. Very good. You're batting a thousand all the way. One more. You can get the last one right. Good to play five one. <laughs> all right. And the score doesn't matter. My awkward one second play is thirteen eight and then making the anchor. But let's look for a minute. I just, I, I, it's hard for me to find another play. Well, the, 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 the other play that was made, you're, you're right again. 
Okay. Play the other play is scooting up. I know what people do here. Yeah. Yeah. They, making the anchor just makes it that much harder to get to the edge of the prime or get out of there. Yeah. But you assure that you have an anchor when the guy has 13 guys in the zone. Because if you step up, you're into a zone where he will hit you and will point on you. Like, you're safe clear back there. Even if you didn't have an anchor, he's not going to blitz you back there. Uh -huh. But now that you have an awkward 5-1 to play, you might as well take the anchor. Isn't it harder to take the cube, though, if you're stuck on that two-point like that? It's it's easier than if you're getting blitzed off the board. Well, 3-ply got this wrong. Oh, 3-ply made, still made the anchor, just the wrong 5. Um, that's not scooching up. Scooching up still a blunder. Hmm. Well, Stick, congratulations. You're 8 for 8. Yeah. I'm very happy with these. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, I thought these were tougher than than they would be. I I usually can stump you once in a while, but uh, this is great. Thanks for the explanations, and uh, I am going to post this on YouTube and uh, send it out to my students to take a look at and study. And uh, uh, now we uh, have another clue of uh, how lucky I was to beat Stick a couple weeks ago. <laughs> great, okay. they were good. Feel them real tough. Yeah, Stick. I'll see you in New York. Yep. Great. See you. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye-bye.